don't know. You don't know where the dings do either, do you? you don't know. Who knows that. how YouTube really works anyway? You don't know what the dings do. <laughs> well, due to the success of our pilot, we have decided to launch the Animal Rights Show series. For our first episode, it's only appropriate we introduce the originator of rights-based animal rights, Ronald Reagan. Now, Ronald Reagan was the 40th president of the United States. Ronald Reagan, what are you talking about? <laughs> Ronald Reagan, that's who we're talking about, right? No, no, it's Tom, a is it Thomas, Thomas, Thomas Reagan. I've just spent a week Sorry. researching Ronald Reagan. You're, you're telling me all that time's pointless. Yes, I'm afraid, I'm afraid so, yeah. Well, in that case, do you want to do a quick introduction of Tom Reagan, the animal rights philosopher? Oh, him, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, look. Oh, look what I got. This, 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 this is the big book. This is the one. Look at that. 400 pages, folks. You know, Reagan essentially is the person who, who did the groundwork, and that is the text that did it. So that's the foundational text. Well, in terms of this clip, this is almost like um, a summary of the book, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, roll, roll the film, VT, VTR, what, 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 do you, what do you say? Tech department, roll the clip! Can we have the clip now, please? <laughs> the other animals humans eat, use in science, hunt, trap, and exploit in a variety of other ways, have a life of their own that is of importance to them, apart from their utility to us. They are not only in the world, they are aware of it, and also of what happens to them. And what happens to them matters to them. Each has a life that fares experientially better or worse for the one whose life it is. Like us, they bring a unified psychological presence to the world. Like us, they are some bodies, not some things. In these fundamental ways, the non-human animals in labs and on farms, for example, are the same as human beings. And so it is that the ethics of our dealings with them and with one another must rest on some of the same fundamental moral principles. So yeah, I think to me, Reagan really revolutionized my advocacy, uh, starting to view things from a rights-based perspective. And this is just one small clip into a much broader philosophy, but at its core to me, it's just about valuing the individual, which I think is just so cool on multiple levels, primarily just because it means that we can keep things very simple and just talk to people about why other animals experience life. What's your uh, key takeaway from a rights-based perspective? One of the strongest things about talking about uh, rights is that, um, like you say, they are, they are based on the individual. So the moral worth of the individual, as Reagan uh, points out. And he, he envisages this idea of a fence or a wall around the individual, each individual, with a no trespass sign on. And that's a very kind of, um, I think that's a very strong metaphor. You know, the idea is that uh, you can't invade my space, as it were. Some, some people um, have difficulty thinking about rights if the duties part of it is not there. Whereas the case for animal rights uh, kind of caters for that. What I always kind of say about kind of like right at the beginning of thinking about rights is you need to get, uh, get an understanding about the difference between legal and uh, moral rights, which is very crucial and negative and um, positive rights. One, once we get a grip of that, we've kind of got the model of rights uh, from a, a Reagan point of view in our head, I suppose. And what do you think is better? Do you think we should just refer to rights or do you think it's helpful to refer to basic moral rights, the basic part referring to those negative rights and the moral part separating away from the legal rights, which is, you know, in modern times as advocacy stands, the more likely to be the, the right to welfare. Well, I think that um, there's obviously utility <laughs> in um, in, ta <laughs> in talking. What's that dirty talking. word you just mentioned? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I can't put a, tape, put a tape on my mouth. The, um, <laughs> He's not referring to utilitarianism, folks. <laughs> no, uh, but there is a, a yeah, there is a kind of functionality of um, talking about uh, you know uh, basic moral rights. So even though that's a bit more of a mouthful. It, it does kind of ground where we're talking about. In theory, at least, it, it kind of doesn't in practice, but in theory, it should should say, oh, well, you, you, you want to give the other animals the right to drive then. Well, 
well, you know, you, you're kind of cutting through that by talking about basic moral rights. Do you think it's important to talk about which rights? Because, you know, the, you've got your right to life, right to liberty, mm. right to bodily integrity, all these things. Do you think we should be specific or leave it to the person we're engaging with to decide which rights we're talking about being violated? Well, it depends, really. I mean, obviously, you need to be flexible in your discourse when you're talking to people about that. But also, um, that's the kind of thing that people will, will ask you anyway. Mm. And um, then you've got the issue of whether to kind of stick with Reagan and talk about, you know, things like the right to life, the right to bodily integrity, um, the right to freedom. Th those, are the, those are the kind of things that Reagan would talk about. Or you could actually say, well, actually, within the animal rights theoretical community, if you like, there's a range of views on that because you could then even just go back to the Francione idea of uh, one right, the right not to be property, um, which, is a, which is a big part of um, Francione's theory because he's a legal mm. scholar. He's a legal scholar more than a philosopher, really. And so um, he thinks that if they have um, the right not to be seen as property, then all the other rights should kind of flow from that. Mm. Uh, yeah, people core, just, right, yeah. Well, because I think mm, it, it's, it's, right. it's probably good, regardless of how we approach it, to narrow in on a specific right or a small list of rights that we're talking about. Because otherwise, I think that the concept of rights mm. is quite abstract, especially if one. Well, has it also gives it. you the, gives you the opportunity as well when when you're listing this small list of of what animal rights actually means. You can then say, so we're not talking about. You know, we can, you can preempt uh, anybody wanted to go. Oh, about the right to drive and this kind of stuff. You know, yeah. You know, you're, you're going to want all dogs um, wanting the right to vote and this kind of stuff. You can preempt all that because you could, you could actually raise that yourself by saying, okay, so this is, this is the core idea about animal rights. So it's not saying this. So, you, you know, you can get that over and done with really in a way. And I guess my approach has been um, focusing on the right to be respected and not be needlessly bred or killed. Mm. Which I guess it's kind of a similar thing because I guess mm. uh, you have to be properties to do that, and vice versa. Mm, a... You're not respecting someone if you consider them property. So it's maybe it's yeah. an eye beholder and trying different strategies out, and different audiences may respond mm. differently to re the concept of respect versus property. Because here, here's a question for you, actually, to, to, to carry on with that point. What about free living beings that hunters go after? They're technically not property. So you, you could say that we're respecting the right not to be property and they just have one bad day. All of a sudden you've circumvented Francione's framing of rights, haven't you? No, because um, uh, the way it works is that once you have killed them, they become property. The body, the body becomes a property, but then the animal is no longer there, is it? Yeah, so I'll, po I'll ponder that one further. We're probably getting yeah. a in depth for episode one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't Reagan talk about um, the right to respectful treatment, doesn't he? Well, and I think once once you start chucking the word treatment around, especially mm. in uh, neo welfareism days, that obviously yeah. opens the doors to what what, what well, kind of you know, this... are we talking about being respectful? Mm. Is it a matter of well, not using them being yeah, interesting, them respect, you know, or is it a matter of using them respectfully? Yeah, yeah, I think it's um, that's one area where you could argue that uh, Francione's position has been a kind of development or evolution of Reagan's position because Reagan would talk about the right to respectful treatment, whereas Francione wanted to really emphasize the difference between talking about treatment and talking about use. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I think, I think that's, it. that's an interesting one, you know. Oh, and there's still a huge amount of ground to cover on that one within the movement, the whole discussion of abuse versus use. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people say abuse because it's more motive and, but really the whole idea of this first episode is to give our viewers um, an idea of what to expect. I know for me, there's a lot of ideas that I've enjoyed exploring as an individual and I think as a movement could certainly warrant some more attention. So really just trying to create a space to do that. So yeah, a few of the topics we plan on cover is highlighting the difference between rights versus welfare, the effectiveness of different forms of um, activism, language from both a rights-based and from a non-speciesist perspective, how a few of the different fields of study, such as uh, philosophy, psychology, sociology, and maybe a few more, there's some lessons learned there that we can incorporate in the relationship between capitalism and animal liberation and maybe explore um, if those things can happen in tandem with one another. David Nybert stuff, yeah. And really just to how to stay sustainable as activists and um, explore current topics and how they stack up under the lens of the true philosophy of animal rights as framed by the originator, mm -hmm. Tom Reagan. 
Yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing that's going to be interesting is um, that, that th kind of thing that uh, Ronnie Lee talks about, which is that kind of um, that kind of three step thing. You know, if you're not vegan, be vegan. Uh, if, if you're vegan, uh, become an activist. And if you're an activist, become an organizer. Well, it's true, though, to continue to move the needle, and not become complacent, because we all, you know, we're all part of this and we have the choice hmm. to be passive bystanders that are still choosing not to take part in the system. But once we get to that point, continuing to look for new ways that we can really try to inspire change. I think that's a critical point. The Facebook page is now set up at the Animal Rights Show on Facebook. But yeah, we'll be doing an Ask Us Anything about veganism and animal rights. People, people can... Um... People can send in questions, and we've we've actually got uh, got a few questions that already lined up, but um, we will prioritize the ones that come in live. Be sure to give our Facebook page a quick like if you want to get notified when we go live. We'll see you in the next episode, folks. I got a new camera. Did you notice that? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the camera that we recorded the pilot on wasn't very good, was it, Jeremy? <laughs> Not very good. Is that is, no. is that how you would put it? It was it was less good than this. Uh, well, we've got some few, few, it had few fewer of those um, things that you keep talking about, what gig, gigabytes and mega mega <laughs> zings and zoomy bytes. Or <laughs> but I think he started. It was ferment fermentating. Is that the word? Fermentating, fermenting. <laughs> it was fermenting. Not You're fermenting. not much of a beer drinker, are you, Roger? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can just do the intro like we talked about earlier, but um. Hmm. Uh, well, well, we'll do it then, for God's sake. You know, people, people, people are going. Well, you stop people, talking. I can have a go at it. People are going to sleep by now. Where's my pillow? You got the wrong Ronald and and Nancy. You, you, what we're talking about is is Ronald. We're not talking about Ronald. You come, you completely at the other side of the political spectrum for one thing, and and also I don't think that. I don't think Ronald Reagan said a damn word about animal rights ever, did he? You want to give us a, pr a quick overview of... Ronald Reagan? I don't know anything about Ronald Reagan. We don't, we'll, we'll say politics for at least episode number two. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> well, well, in that well, case, you, do, you, do you want to you do started, a quick... You started with politics. You went to Ronald Reagan. So, um, so this is really useful for, um, you know, if you've got a wobbly table leg. I might get one of those signs that say I'm not with this guy, you know, pointing. <laughs> I mean, it's a terrible recording, isn't it? You know, oh, the picture, yeah. yeah. I mean, like people, people, you know, people who put that kind of quality recording out in nowadays is just terrible, I think. Mm. Yeah, do you want to do that? <laughs> All of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just. <laughs> because I, we can. Is, we can... Is, that, is that your way of telling me to save some for the later episodes? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's my way of saying, Jeremy, less is more. <laughs> can, can, I, can I just clarify something? You, you mentioned psychology before, sociology, did you? Is that, is that what you, did, just did? Did you? <laughs> Was there a subtle hierarchical ranking there that we... Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. Your sociologist yeah. isn't there. I, 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 uh, um, I, I yes. thought you might have spent a couple years in the... Yeah. <laughs> thing, you know, if you're not vegan, be vegan. Uh, if, if you're vegan, uh, become an activist. And if you're an activist, become an organizer. That's and if you're an organizer, action. don't be a dick. Yeah, that's another one, yeah. <laughs> then do your own YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, the, final, the final one of all those is set up your Patreon account. <laughs> and, and with that, I mean, I think we've set up a new Facebook page, haven't we? We have. Yeah. <laughs> it took, it took a moment there. It's all a blur, isn't it? <laughs> it it's kind of, kind of like, oh, God. Um, it's got a title. You told me to go quick, quicker, so I'm going it's, quicker. You said it's got a title, which, I'm which, talking quicker. Which Jeremy will, it's got a title which Jeremy will now tell you because I've slightly forgotten it. Oh, the, it's the Animal Rights Show. Is it? What's it? What's, what's it called? I'll flash it up on the screen oh. so people can look it up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we, we, we're at the, we're at the uh, shitty end of the stick, uh, as, as we say in Dublin. But, you know, when we were setting this show up, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, uh, Jeremy encouraged me to do an internet speed test, which I did, diligently <laughs> did. And what was your reaction, Jeremy? Well, I believe you, you said something around your upload was about 512, and I said 512. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not talking about what, what the numbers were. Oh, so you, your you're reaction? not comfortable what sharing was, your numbers, are what, you? <laughs> what was your reaction? 
<laughs> I believe it was laughter. It was. Absolutely. <laughs> Hilarity it was. And uh, I, I suddenly felt about this small. We'll be doing live videos this week. The plan is to do us. Got, got more than 500 likes now, too. Oh, is it over 500? That's brilliant. So, yeah. But so, so, my now, YouTube yeah, channel has been going for two, three years, and I think I just hit 500. So, in the space of a week, we hit 500. I think I'm on the wrong platform. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to get your speed up and see when the good time is to hit Facebook. Where what, Facebook's what, not what, what's that well. called, Jeremy? That, that's called getting more RAM or something. Is it more RAM, <laughs> more, more gig, giga hits or gig, gig, <laughs> giga fits? Gig, gig, Gigabot, as long as we get enough giga hits, we know we're doing well. Yeah, I want some mega, mega, megabytes or something. Giga hit sounds like uh, something, yeah, illegal. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, it sounds like something from my retro show. You know, here's the giga hits from the 1970s. Everybody has to say this thing, don't they? Kind of like we want you to smash a like. Oh yeah, on this video. Let's see, if we can, let's see if we can you know, smash 50 likes on 50 thumbs up on this video. We, we don't want you just to we don't want you to just click it. We want you to smash it. Smash it. But we're nonviolent. Animal rights philosophy is all about nonviolence. So yeah. peacefully we smash, smash that smash subscribe it, button. Smash it, yes. <laughs> you, you gotta ding the bell as well, don't you? Oh yeah. You ding, yep. yeah ding the bell. I, I, I don't actually actually confession time folks I don't, I don't ding the bells do you do you ding the bells when you subscribe <laughs> i feel like we're getting a bit personal here <laughs> I, 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 no, I, i've never donged i've never donged the bell <laughs> i still don't have to do that I, I i need to go back all the way through my subscriptions and ding ding the bell <laughs> well maybe you can ding what? the bell for our video at least no but i don't even know what that does tell me what it does you're the i think you get geek. email notifications so if you have 50 subscriptions, but oh, none you, of you them don't actually, bell? You don't actually get like a bell on the computer when it, when it had something new. Computer. I, I'm afraid it's a bit more symbolic than that. Oh, oh well. It's just symbolized the notification. So it might, you might get a ding depending on how your device is configured, but. No, no, you, that can't be true because you, you, if you subscribe, you get an email. So it can't be that you just get an email when you ding as well. I think the default is to get highlights. But you don't know. Bell. You don't know you what the dings do either, do you? you don't know. Who knows how YouTube really works anyway? You don't know what the dings do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, smash a like, ding a ding, and <laughs> we'll. we'll uh, yeah, actually, there is, there is an old song from the seventies called uh, "Give Me That Give Me That Ding." That might that might be our uh, uh, theme theme tune. Maybe that can be our outro music. Yeah, give me that ding, give me that, give me, give me that, give me that ding. That's that's where it goes. I think it's better if you just sing it. No, a better of <laughs> an in tune version. I think. <laughs> <laughs>